Refusing to accept reality does not mean it ceases to exist. Keith Cunningham. DZ Tribe, Josh Thomas. If you haven't already, check out thedozone.com for productivity tips, accountability, and overall just a great bunch of human beings looking to get more stuff done. And also wanted to let you know uh, that I do have a personality profile assessment now available. It's called the Do Zone DNA. It's going to help you understand how you get stuff done so that you can build the world around you for optimal performance. You can learn more about that by going to dozonedna.com. And certainly we appreciate you subscribing, leaving reviews, telling a friend, uh, anybody that needs to be more productive and get more stuff done, uh, invite them to join us on the Do Zone podcast. And I want to talk about today's guest. Today's guest is... Mehdi Kachani, and Mehdi is a Florida licensed broker and the founder of JMK Property Investment, a vertically integrated company that offers brokerage, investment, property management, and general contracting services in South Florida. Mehdi holds a bachelor's and master's in engineering, as well as an MBA from the Wharton School of Business at UPenn. Mehdi, welcome to the Do Zone. Say what's up to the tribe and tell us something you believe is the key to getting stuff done that most people wouldn't think of. Awesome, awesome. Well, first of all, uh, Josh, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to participate in your podcast. And thank you for this question. I mean, um, definitely there are a few things that I can think of in terms of what can help get things done. And uh, the one that I at least in my experience, has impacted my work the most. And by far, it's not an intuitive response, but somehow it's magical and it works. <laughs> and that one is the vision board. Honestly, like I've tried for my whole career to set goals and do things uh, in an effective way. And I've always, my whole career, when I look back, I'm always trying to think not only about the next step, but two steps ahead. And then I remember in 2020, I was sitting with my wife. She was pregnant of our second son. And it was the middle of COVID. It was a little bit depressing to be completely transparent. And I wanted to do an activity, something different. And I had heard about Vivid Vision and the idea of uh, building a, a, a vision board. And I told her, let's sit down. Oh, beautiful. Got the book <laughs> right here. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And then, and then so I, I, I set her down. We started making a collage of things that we wanted. We split the, that the big, large uh, paper in two uh, between uh, personal and, and business. And then uh, we started making this collage. And what I, the, the instruction I had for her is don't filter anything. I know you want to, we set a date, we said, I think it was by 2024, but I told her, whatever comes to mind, it's an aspirational goal, aspirational vision, just put it there, don't filter it, that's very important. And we, we made this collage, I was very proud of it at the end, it was a common vision board. And the magical thing is that that was in 2020 or maybe even early no, uh, mid 2020, if I recall correctly, and, and by the end of 2021, a large portion of those goals were realized. And the crazy thing is that this is it, it, those goals were not even realistic. You would have told me, oh yeah, you can own a property by the beach in, in the area you want, in the backyard, this and that. Uh, by end of 2021. It wasn't, I wouldn't comprehend it because I knew what, how the prices were for, for, for a house in that location. And it did happen. So, sorry, it's a long answer, but I, I, I wanted to give a little bit more uh, flavor and details on this. It does work. And we, now we're updating this vision board uh, every year. And it does work. That's incredible. And so I've, I've seen the concept of vision boards. You know, I'm familiar with the book, obviously. I actually mm -hmm. have interviewed Cameron Harold on a previous oh, podcast. Yeah. And uh, and so I'm I'm all about this, but I'm just curious from your perspective, why do you feel like visualizing this was 
at least partially responsible for realizing it? That's a very good question. I, I, I don't think I have the exact answer. I don't think nobody knows really, but I, I <laughs> What's think- What's the meaning does. of life, Mehdi? Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I do, I do believe, like if you look at our brain, uh, the, the, the brain, I mean, it's maybe, it's a small portion of our brain that is conscious and the large part of it is subconscious. So uh, I, I think when you create this vision board, you're essentially communicating with that subconscious and aligning a lot of your activity, even your attitude towards those goals. And subconsciously, there's so much we're doing that we're not even aware of. So I, I think it just channels a lot of your energy uh, towards these goals without you even knowing about it. it of course, it's a compass. And, and, and we make so many decisions on a daily basis that we're not aware of. And, and I think by having a visual representation of what you want, you're kind of uh, guiding those 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 decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, and we know like we always overestimate what we can do in a few days, but underestimate what we can do in a year or five years. So if you're optimizing everything you do on a daily basis, eventually you're going to get to those goals, even though you're not necessarily seeing it on a day-to-day -day basis. That's how I uh, rationalize the the process. And, uh, and I'm curious, uh, because I, I have a friend uh, who is a huge fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza, mm -hmm. and you may or may not be familiar with him, but uh, a vision board was kind of part of his process as well. And she, on her vision board, uh, placed a photo of a, of a new construction condominium on the beach. And she ended up purchasing a condo that looked almost exactly like two years prior. It looked almost exactly like this picture that she had seen. And as soon as she saw this condo, she was like, Oh no, I have to have this. It was, it was like, it was like the identical twin of a picture on her vision board. And she was kind of manifesting that into, uh, into reality. Uh, and so I'm just curious, would you be willing to share just one or two things that, that you thought were completely unrealistic on that vision board that actually came to fruition. Yeah, absolutely. So your friend, the person you just mentioned right now, she before she even pulled the trigger, she made the analogy between the condo she was visiting, about to purchase, and the, that that image on, on, on the vision board. Mm -hmm. Something very similar happened to me uh, in relation to exactly the same vision board. The only difference is that I, I wasn't even aware that I was uh, executing on something that wasn't on my vision board. So one of the crazy things we had in our mind is we want an office in Miami Beach. I, I, I literally skateboarded this morning to the office. And we have an office on Lincoln Road, which is one of the most prestigious streets in, in, in the Miami area. Uh, it's now Domo. And... This vision board, I, even though I updated the vision board, I come back to it from time to time. And after I bought the office, we bought it earlier this year, I, 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 I revisited the vision board and it was like, it's surreal because you look at the photo of the office that I had pasted on that board and it's the similarities. It's not identical, obviously, but the similarities are incredible, like the glass doors, the, even the desks, they, they were not uh, behind one another. They were facing one another. And on the vision board, the same thing was there. I wanted to get to uh, 100 plus units that I own with my wife. I mean, we're, we're heading there and, and our goal was for 2024 on that vision board. But even the shape of the building we ended up buying, that changed our life. Honestly, one building, one transaction, a good uh, real estate transaction has given us literally freedom overnight and we, we could kind of retire with that. The shape of that building is exactly as on the as what I have on the vision board. So and and wow. any I, I go back to the vision board from time to time and and I see it and I'm like this is incredible. Like you find little details that you had put there that you didn't even pay attention to and when you revisit it, especially as time goes by, even though you may have a new vision board, that first vision board kind of still takes effect. I can't explain it, honestly, but I, I tried to give you the best explanation. Yeah. Well, it's, but it's, it, that, that was my personal experience. It's transformational, really. 
uh, just to think that you can put a picture of something on a piece of, uh, you know, yeah. poster board and, if, and within some reasonable time later, it becomes a real thing. And, and I'm, and I am curious, you said, well, you know, we were purchased this building that changed our life, that changed the trajectory of our life. Uh, you don't have to go into specific details about that, but I, I'm, I'm curious, I'm sure all of us as entrepreneurs, we're always looking for ways to level up. And I know that you're into real estate investing. Uh, what was it that was so special about this building that made things different and change for you? Yes. So I, I think anybody who's been investing uh, during the pandemic is uh, comes across as a rock star, uh, <laughs> even though you, you may not be that special. And I'm benefiting from that. I mean, uh, real estate prices have gone up significantly recently, and that's uh, demand and supply, especially in South Florida or the Southeast of the U.S. A lot of people are, have migrated from the Northeast and California towards uh, our area, especially Miami. So when we bought the building, it was uh, the average rent was 1250 It's 27 units, concrete structure, two bedrooms. And we took the rents from 1200 in our business plan we wanted to take them that rent to uh, 1500 so from 1250 to 1500 mm. and uh, we got there very quickly with minimal renovations just because the, the market was going up we bought it at a discount and the way to look at the value you create when you invest is uh, by looking at that difference in rent that rent improvement which goes straight to your bottom line, what we call the net operating income of the, the real estate property. And then you multiply that increase by the number of doors, and then you divide it. So I don't want to get too technical, but you divide it by the cap rates, and that gives yeah. you the value you've created. Mm -hmm. What happened is, so $1,500 was a good case scenario. Actually, we'd be so happy we've met our numbers and stuff. Four months ago, we started renting units for $1,800. Uh, dollars, 1,800. Uh, and most recently we rented for uh, 1,900. It's the same unit. And then my wife just rented the unit uh, in, a, in, a, in a property that we manage that's next door for $2,200. It, wow. It's the mass, the increases. So we've put certain amount of money that we took back through uh, refinance so uh, essentially the returns are infinite because we pretty much have recovered uh, all our down payment. And on top of that, the bank doesn't loan you, loans you up to a debt service ratio. So it loans you enough money so you can pay the debt down so you can uh, service the debt, but also have some form of cushion. So with that cushion, we're netting after the refinance, after taking all our uh, money back, we're netting uh, $25,000. And then eventually we're going to be netting 30 to 35 wow. uh, from that single property. And that's over that over. Yeah. That more than exceeds our, uh, expenses. Wow. That's how it happened. We, we got lucky and, and, and yeah. Well, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it all to luck. I mean, there was there, certainly some skill involved in finding the right property. And, you know, I've, I've been in multifamily for a long time and, uh, one of the kind of common phrases that goes around is you make all your money on the buy. Yeah. Uh, and by buying correctly, uh, then everything else falls into place. Because if you don't buy it correctly, you're always behind and trying to catch up and hoping yeah. that the market is going to do whatever. But if you buy correctly, it doesn't really matter what the market does at some point. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and so, and especially in South Florida, that is a hyper competitive market. Um, and, and I'm sure this isn't really a real estate podcast per se, but it's, it's an area that is very interesting to me and for entrepreneurs out there that are looking for ways to make their wealth grow so that they maybe don't have to, uh, continue clocking in with their business. Uh, they mm -hmm. may be looking for some new, uh, ideas for where to place their money. So tell us a little bit about what you've seen in the market lately, because I know that it had a boom. And then there was all this talk about recession and interest rates going up and that. How have you seen that affect the market in the last couple of months or have you not seen an effect? 
That's a very good question. Um, essentially, I'm going to try to summarize it as much as possible. Everybody talks about higher interest rates. What happens with higher interest rates is people can afford less. So uh, that affects the single homes, single family homes. But that, what that also means is that people who would possibly buy a home to live in are forced to rent for, for longer. So on, in terms of the single homes, definitely we're seeing uh, a tapering. It may be, it's been seller's market for a long time, but it's becoming more of a buyer's market uh, lately. I don't know how long that will last, but for someone who wants to buy, it's definitely something favorable. You can have more uh, leveraging power to negotiate. Uh, and then on the multifamily, I think it's it's actually, if anything, helps us because, and we're seeing it in the rental numbers, there's more demand for, for rentals. I think it's a supply and, and demand uh, type of analysis, and we're continuing to see the uh, rents go up. The other thing also is Miami, I, I mean, so South Florida sees about 100 people moving move to this area daily these people need need housing and and as a result we were seeing yeah the the trend continue i don't see how the at least as of now i don't see how the bubble would first especially not in a way that's comparable to 2008 mm -hmm. a lot of people are talking about recession i mean technically because of two quarters two successive quarters with the gdp going down you're of technically in a, in, a, in a recession, but that's also created artificially by the Fed increase in interest rates. So I'm, I'm still optimistic, especially in the real estate market and, and especially in multifamily. The, the reality is that even in the worst uh, crisis, real estate crisis in, in, in history, of modern history of the US, which is 2008, the multifamily uh, assets still did okay. The, the 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 prices didn't didn't suffer too much as in other uh, asset classes. Yep, that's right. Yeah, and it's a uh, the the most important distinction to make here. And I think you're 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 making this very very well. And I and I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you. What we see on the news and the gloom and doom, and you know the economy is going into the toilet, all that stuff especially with respect to the real estate markets, almost exclusively is talking about single family, uh, residential, mortgages, those sorts of things. Multifamily is usually not something that gets talked about a whole lot on the news because you're right, uh, historically speaking, it has weathered the storm of rocky financial times, but mm -hmm. it didn't get a lot of attention. So everybody thinks that every everything in real estate ebbs and flows the same, but that's not actually the case. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. We, and again, I try one, one of my big accomplishments this year, every year I try to become a better version of myself. And one of my biggest accomplishments this year was to disconnect from uh, reading the news. <laughs> Peace okay. of mind. I don't, I, and it's good because another thing it does for me is that if I want to get a news update, I'm, I'm forced to call people or uh, I reconnect with, I mean, I, I call friends and I tell them, hey, what's going on? And I pick their brain on what's going on in the news. But that's the extent of how I uh, get my updates on the news. It's just, it's created a lot of noise and, 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 and it's a lot of useless information. Okay, the world is falling apart. What am I going to do? How, how can I make this actionable for me to make decisions? <laughs> you know, it's interesting about your exercise here. Well, I have to call my friends to find out what's going on. And then do you ever get like, when they actually tell you what's going on because they're hooked into the news, do you ever just kind of feel like, well, why should I care about that? <laughs> do you ever have that kind of reaction? Yeah. I mean, obviously we live in a polarized world and then sometimes people say things and I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's, I, I, it's business as usual. I don't know how, how that would be relevant to my day to day. So yeah. it, you, you create your own little bubble, but sometimes it's good for peace of mind. I don't want to have to worry about every single thing that happens within 24 hours. Just yeah. live your life, optimize what you do and, and, and help people as much as you can. I, that's kind of my, kind of day-to-day -day mantra, you know, and, and be happy. 
Well, that's very zen of you, Mehdi. I'm sure um, I'm going to put that on my vision board. I'm going to put a picture of you on there. Oh, and hopefully I can good. hopefully I can be just like you in a couple of years. Maybe it'll come to me quicker than I expect. So, oh, for uh, sure. But yeah, speaking of speaking of picking brains, uh, I'd like to get in there and do a little do zone diagnostic on yours. Are you ready? Absolutely, go for it, my friend. Awesome. So, uh, just five questions, rapid fire. First thing that comes to mind: Number one, what's one thing you do that keeps you focused on your goals? Waking up early, that's the first thing that comes to mind. If I, You know, you, you have good days, bad days, and you're in different... Sorry if I make a long question, but no, waking up early really gives me the uh, the time to recenter myself, work out. Typically, if I, if I do two things, if I work out in the morning and if I wake up early, it just uh, increases my, chance of having, my chances of having a better good day. Nice. And how do you get back on track when you lose that focus? Mm. Working out is one. Uh, spending time with my kids is another one. Trying to disconnect. You know, sometimes I'm very intense in the way I operate. I, I am extremely productive, but I do so many things uh, in a day in general. So sometimes you've almost, when you created this space, you almost feel like you have to maintain it. So if I want to recenter myself or get back on track, I, I actually I do the opposite of what you would do if you wanted to increase your productivity. I just pull the plug, focus on what's important to me, my wife, my kids, uh, put my phone away, and that's it. Cool. And who is your support group, and how do they keep you accountable? Oh, so I'm a part of a mastermind, uh, Go Abundance. Uh, definitely, that's been helpful i'm part of uh, another community called jake and gino but aside from that i i have a small group of friends that i uh, i look up to that i i call on a regular basis we coach each other and of course my my wife we were we work together <laughs> so you can imagine that uh, we're having a lot of conversations throughout the day and then when we are with the kids that's awesome I love it. And and how do you approach a difficult project that you're not sure how to complete? Honestly, for me, whenever I have an issue, uh, and whenever I it's it's one thing to have an issue, but it's another one to for that issue to have an impact on on me. I uh, the way I, I resolve it is a good night of sleep. And it's it's amazing how in the morning you're less sensitive, you're more energized, and problems that can seem to be big at night when you're exhausted and have had a long day are much more manageable hmm. earlier in, in, in the morning. But usually I try to put things in perspective, uh, framing, you know, you wanna, you can look at the same thing and, and frame it in such a way that it becomes something positive. My own experience is some of the worst things that have happened to me actually turned out to be good things. Uh, mm. And then one of my favorite quotes, I don't know who said it, but maybe just, I, I don't even recall the source, but having my mind, mind constantly is 99% of problems never happen. Mm. Uh, it's, if you think about the stuff that you can worry about, 99% of them are actually you're anticipating for something to happen that actually never materializes. That's true. Yeah, I, I have heard a variation of that many different times, uh, but but I love it. 99% of problems never happen. And, and uh, well, last question for you here, Mehdi. What is the number one pro tip that you would give to someone looking to get more stuff done in less time? It's it would be on a case by case basis. I can tell you just one experience that I've had recently that's changed uh, a lot for me is hiring an assistant. In life, if you want to be successful, you need to leverage capital and you need to leverage people. So you want to get more stuff done, leverage. Find the right people that can do tasks. Uh, we tend to uh, think. 
there that nobody can do things better than us. I think it's the opposite. I, I always look for how I can delegate so I can focus on high level, uh, productive, complex uh, issues that really need my attention. Everything else is delegated. Uh, yeah, I uh, I actually just said almost the exact same thing on a different podcast recently. Uh, leverage <laughs> leverage is one of the most important things that you can do, aside from focus and getting clear on who you serve and and how you serve them. Uh, leverage is kind of that that crucial next step for that, and so I, I appreciate you sharing it. And and so Absolutely. and so, Mitty, tell me a little bit about. Uh, I know you've you've purchased your multifamily property. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing right now and how you are serving your people. Okay, so many different ways. Uh, right now, obviously, I we own four businesses: the investment, the brokerage, the GC, and the property management. We have a business unit lead for each one of them. I'm focusing on the investment portion of the business. So we are looking at multifamily opportunities that meets our criteria and the criteria of our investors. That's my main occupation. In terms of ways that we serve, I mean, I, we always try to give back. A uh, couple of, uh, actually, weeks ago, we, we created a grant for our residents where we had the tenants apply for uh, back-to-school uh, supplies and and it's an activity that I was able to do with my kids and, and, and share and help uh, yeah, kids uh, be in a better position going into uh, the new uh, school year. And then we, we try to care. I mean, the, the business that we have is heavily centered on, on the employees. Although, so with our rental units, we, my wife and I, we kind of cover our needs and our philosophy for the businesses that we have it was to create businesses that are not about the ownership of the business, but figure out how we can structure the business in a way that our employees do well. From my perspective, when you have an employee, that employee wakes up in the morning thinking about business, works on business throughout the day, and possibly they go to bed thinking about their next day and how they can contribute. That's extremely valuable to me, and I respect that. And we daily, we, we, we think about how we can make these businesses help uh, the financial situation of our employees. And uh, we work towards that. Excellent. That's so great. And, and so you are, are helping uh, kids in need with their school supplies. And that was an activity you were able to do actually with your family, with your kids. And so yeah, I think that was really fulfilling. Yeah. Awesome. And, and who would be a good uh, potential client to engage with you? Clients, I mean, investor. If uh, we, we've built like the, uh, the personas of, uh, for our business, honestly, the investor is the best suited clients. We, we closed a transaction recently where we brokered a multifamily deal in Miami at a very good price. The client was extremely happy with it. Then we had a massive GC projects for that same client and we have a general contracting business actually i'm a licensed plumber and general contractor in florida in the state of florida well you do and a then, lot of things man yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love this stuff man. <laughs> also, also me uh yeah you're gonna you're definitely gonna need a plumber for that also me <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then so after that we're gonna yeah, lead these these units, and then we have the property management business that takes over uh, the property and and runs it on behalf of the uh, the owner investor. Okay, got it. And so, what would be one website that we could send people to if they wanted to engage with you? Yeah, so JMK Property Investments. My my email is medi m e h d i at JMK Property Investment dot com. That's uh, the kind of corporate websites. Otherwise, it's uh, jmkre.com or jmkpropertymanagement.com or jmkcontractor.com. That's the last one. Okay. That's a lot. Let's pick one. <laughs> I'm sure 
I'm sure they're all feverishly writing down, but I got J J M K property investment.com. Can we send them there? That's perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Excellent. Yes. Cool. Uh, that's, that's so great. I, I really appreciate uh, you coming on here and sharing, especially that vision board story. That was really cool. Uh, and uh, just, yeah. just, just to close it out. I know that you have, uh, you're an avid kite surfer. You've done this in 14 different countries. First of all, uh, what the heck is kite surfing? I can imagine like a surfboard and like a giant kite of some sort, but, you know, explain it to me. And why, why is this That's something perfect. you're passionate about? You, you describe it perfectly. Essentially, okay. you turn your body into a sail. You have a board, uh, a board attached to your feet and you have a harness that's attached to a kite and you use the wind to navigate. And the beautiful thing is you can go to any place that has wind and water and you can physically move yourself using the wind to, to get anywhere. Wow. And uh, wow. one of the, I mean, I've been to a lot of places, kite surfing, but one that would always be memorable is going to this festival in uh, Crimea uh, when it used to be part of Ukraine and uh, kite surfing there. And then eventually Crimea turned, uh, was uh, annexed by uh, Russia. But that was almost like being part of history. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And so is it attached to a boat or do you just kind of move yourself? You move yourself. So you have a kind of a bar mm -hmm. that you can use to control. So if you move, move the bar left, the kite moves left. If you move ah. the bar right, the kite moves right. And that motion of the kite is, is going to propel your, your body forward. And as it does that, you, you control your feet in such a way that you're sliding on the water. Whoa. And you can literally go anywhere anywhere like you can imagine the most beautiful scenery with water and wind and you can bring your take yourself anywhere and then the other beautiful thing about it is you can jump pretty high if you have the right conditions you can fly that sounds terrifying i love it <laughs> i want it reminds you ever me come to miami josh I, you're more than welcome uh to, for a free uh, lesson kite surfing lesson i would be happy to teach you I'll put it on my vision board. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it does. It sounds fascinating. It reminds me of, uh, I was in a, uh, there's a huge ca uh, canyon in Colombia called Chicamocha. And uh, they mm -hmm. had uh, parasailing. Oh, beautiful. And, and so basically, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this at all. And so there's this dude that straps to you and there's a huge, like the, not the parachute, but like the sail type of parachute. And in my instructions, fortunately, I was I'm fluent in Spanish and he gave me the instructions in Spanish. But basically, the basic, the basic translation was start moving your legs and keep running until there's no ground under you. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> they so, meant it. <laughs> yeah 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 and so yeah it was it was terrifying so i could imagine this would might maybe be a little a little less because it's closer to the you know closer to the surface and you know can't be too bad so i'm gonna put that on the list so for those of you that want to have professional kite surfing lessons go to jmkpropertyinvestment.com <laughs> <laughs> and also if you want to learn more about multifamily real estate especially in south florida I encourage you to reach out to Mehdi Kachani by going to jmkpropertyinvestment.com. And that's going to do it for today's episode of The Do Zone. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, would love it if you could go and subscribe to this podcast so that you don't miss any future episodes. Also, tell a friend about The Do Zone. Bring them in. Have them listen to this podcast. Subscribe. Leave a review. Don't forget to go to dozonedna.com and get your personality profile assessment for your entrepreneurship. And uh, one more time, that's Mehdi Kachani, jmkpropertyinvestment.com is our guest today. Thank you so much for everything that you've shared with us. If you're a busy entrepreneur, head to thedozone.com for more productivity tips, tools, and strategies. Until next time, remember, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. What are you going to do with yours.